Hello everyone, it is Lakidra again, and I pray that each and every one of you, under the sound of my voice, so far has had a week of empowerment. I pray that as you have been keeping your mind stayed upon the Lord and of who he says you are in him, that you have been able to overcome every battle in your mind, every battle that is going on in your soul. I pray that you have been able to receive the garment of praise, whatever has happened. You know, that's where the battlefield is. And once you're able to win the battle in your mind, you'll be able to win it in your life. Having power over all the power of the enemy starts in your mind. It starts with you having your faith in who the word says you are. And so I want to thank each and every one so far for coming on, joining with me. You may be facing a situation right now that has you feeling like you are hopeless and you are powerless. There may be a spiritual mountain that you are facing in your marriage, in your family, or whatever else. You are going through right now. And it may have you feeling like you are the grasshopper. It may have you feeling like there is no way out. And that you will never overcome it. Those of you that are in Christ Jesus. The body of Christ. You have already overcame all the wiles of the devil. And nothing shall by any means harm you. But the kids. Knowing for yourself. Knowing who you are, believing the very word of God of who Christ says you are. As a man thinks in his own heart, the word of God tells us in the book of Proverbs, so is he. And so the moment you believe that you are a giant in the realm of the spirit and you are far above your enemy, that's how your enemies will see you. But the moment you begin to see that you are defeated and you begin to speak failure and you begin to speak doubt and you begin to speak against who God says you are, that's also how your enemy will see you. And your enemy will think that he does not have to move out of your way and that he doesn't have to obey you. When you feel like he's the one that's greater than you. For the one in you is greater than he that is in this world. And you know, this is what also happened with the people of Israel. Because they were afraid of the giants and saw themselves as being small as grasshoppers. In their own minds, they were not able to go in and take their authority and take the land. And this is what happens to us in the realm of the spirit. That spiritual mountain that you are facing will feel like that it doesn't have to obey you. If in your own heart and in your own mind, you feel like you don't have the power to do it. To cast it out. To move it out. To drive it out. You won't see it move. But the moment you know that you have the power. And that you are far above your enemies. The moment you believe this in your own heart and in your own mind, it will obey you. Your enemy will obey you as you resist the devil. He will flee from you. I want us to look at the story. I want us to look at this account. The account of what happened to the children of Israel. How they saw themselves. And what they said. I want us to look at this account here in Numbers chapter 13. This is what happened. They said in verse 33. We even saw giants there. The descendants of Anak. Next to them we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought too. And you know this scripture is so profound. It's really showing us what happens in the realm of the spirit. Even though we are, we are reading about natural things that took place when the people of God were commanded to go in and, and possess the land. These were the things that they witnessed. This is what happened. They really 
saw the giants. As the 12 spies went in and spied out the land. But 10 came back with a negative report. And they looked powerless against their enemies. They looked hopeless. It looked like they were defeated already before the battle had been started. And that may be what your situation is saying to you. That you are small. You will not make it. You will not move me. I have you. I have you defeated. That divorce might be saying there's no way out. You know, you may be looking at your spouse. That your spouse doesn't have a chance to come out of the darkness, to come out of the pit. Things may look hopeless. You may have not even heard from your spouse and God knows how long. I don't know what your situation may be, but with God all things are possible. And the moment you believe these things in your own heart, so will it be. As the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, it says, For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. It's our faith that helps us overcome this world. And your faith is what's going to cause you to see that giant, that situation be overturned. You're going to see that enemy flee from you. This is how you overcome the world. This is how you overcome all its evil and wickedness. Every attack is by your faith. And the Bible says in verse 5, Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. You see, when you believe upon him, you take on his same power and image and likeness. You have the life of of God on the inside of you. You have the power of God on the inside of you. You have the greatest, the greatest warrior, the, the powerful king of kings and lord of lords on the inside of you. But if you don't believe in him and you believe more in that situation and you believe more in the enemy, well, then he will have rule over you. He will have the power over you. But the moment you believe upon him, who is? This is how you overcome the evil that has rose up against you. That's what we just read. Hallelujah. That's what we just read. You will overcome as you have faith in the son of God. Telling that situation you are defeated already. Because greater is he that is in me. Then you that is in this world, as you speak to that situation and believe it with all your heart, believe it, that the one on the inside of you is greater than it. This is how you'll overcome. As Jesus said it in verse 19 of Luke chapter 10, he says, behold, I give unto you power to tread. That means to walk on. To walk on. To overthrow. To overtake. Hallelujah. To overtake. He says, I have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all, not some. He says, all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And this is really what God was trying to say to the children of Israel. Go in and possess the land. Nothing shall by any means harm you. I've given you power over the giant. God is not a man that he shall lie. They didn't believe. And because they felt that they were already defeated and powerless. And grasshoppers, the Bible says, they felt so small. They, that means they, they, they felt powerless. They felt like their enemies had the power. And this is why they was not able to go in and possess the land. And so the key is. Believing, believing that you are the one that have the power over the enemy and that he has to obey you. And he will think this way too. He will believe this way. He will think this way too. But notice, back in Numbers, the way they saw themselves was how the enemy, they felt, saw them. And this is what will happen to you. This is how you will find your faith not being strong and you not able to come out of your situation 
and that you cannot overcome that problem is when you feel that way too. When you believe that way too. And so your enemy will feel like he does not have to do what you say. You will not be a threat to that mountain. You will not be a threat to the powers in the unseen realm. But as you see yourself being who God says you are, so will your enemies. And they will have to bow to you. They will have to obey you. The moment you begin to take your authority and resist the devil, he will flee from you. But if you see yourself smaller than him, he will also feel that way too. And so it is so important that you renew your mind. Believe in only who God says you are in your own heart. You will begin to see that situation obey you as you command it. As you command it to go. You have been given power and authority over whatever's going on in your home. Over whatever's going on in your life. Over that enemy. That has come in to kill, steal, and to destroy. You have been given power to even set the captives free in your house. By you speaking to the captives. Hallelujah. By you speaking to the one that has come in. To bring into captivity your loved ones and steal your marriage. And steal what God has given you. God, our Lord Jesus Christ, has given you authority over it all. It is something you tend to. It is what you have been given to watch over. It was never God's will for any of us to ever be powerless. We overcome it all and have the same power in us that raised Christ from the dead. Dwelling on the inside of us just by having our faith in the son of the living God. Hallelujah. And so I want to also pray at the end for the Lord to begin to enlighten the eyes of that one that is struggling right now in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. You are believing that that situation is more powerful than the one who is on the inside of you. You may be struggling saying, oh Lord, I don't know if I can overcome. I don't think this situation would ever turn around. You see, that's what happened with the children of Israel. They didn't believe that, it, that they didn't believe that they could go in and overtake the land because their enemies looked more powerful and stronger and huge and undefeated. And I know how that feels, people of God. I know. I remember when things looked so hopeless. I felt powerless. I didn't know if God was able to come in and turn things around in my life. But I'm telling you, don't let that stop you. I had to keep pressing on. I had to keep pressing on to the muck of the high calling. I had to trust God. And eventually, as you do the same, you're going to find your faith getting stronger in God and lesser and lesser in that situation. You're going to see the tables turn. That problem that may look like the giant right now will soon look like the grasshopper. And you're going to be the one that feels like the giant. And that enemy will think so too. That's what it's all about. Getting the tables to turn. Yes, that enemy may have come in one way, but shall scatter in seven ways. As the Bible says it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your enemies that has been chasing you, you will find that you are the one causing them to scatter. Praise the Lord. And so, you know, as Paul says it in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, I want to start here. He says, I pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This was also what John the apostle was talking about. He was talking about. The mighty power that we've been given who believe. And so Paul the Apostle is saying that he prayed that, that there will be an understanding. A spiritual understanding of the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. He says this is the same. The exact same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. 
Now remember, he was dead for three whole days and three whole nights. But rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. And here the word is showing us. The word is saying, this is the same mighty power we have. The ones that believe have this same power. This same mighty power that seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. The same mighty power. Hallelujah. And then it says, now he is far above any ruler. Now this is the power that's on inside of you. Has you far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Is dwelling on the inside of the one who believes. And so your enemy. Your enemy will believe this thing too. As you believe it first. Hallelujah. And this is what will cause your enemies to be scattered. And this is what will cause the mountain to move. The moment you give the command. You're the one in charge. You're the one who is leading. You're the one who's in authority. Far above any ruler. That means the enemy that has come in and caused the divorce in your marriage. You have power over him and authority to command him to get out and loose your spouse that he may have bound. But you must see yourself as being far above it all. And so this is going to take renewing your mind, hearing the word of God day and night, meditating on it, allowing it to penetrate so that you can get the understanding and revelation and see yourself the way God sees you. Then it goes on and says, God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things. Why? For the benefits of the church. He done this so that we will have power and authority. Hallelujah. He's seated far above them all so that we will be seated far above it all. When he was raised up, we was raised up with him. We were seated with him far above our enemies. It says, and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ. Who fills all things everywhere with himself. You are filled with him. You are filled with God on the inside of you. Who is far above that situation. That power. That principality. That ruler. In the darkness. That ruler of the darkness. But you cannot overcome it without faith. It is by your faith. And knowing who you are in your own mind. Acting like it. Talking like it. Walking like it. Hallelujah. Believing that that's who you are. And that's how your enemies will also see you. But if you see yourself as a grasshopper. And if you begin to declare that you cannot overcome. And that you are defeated. That's how your enemies will see you too. And that enemy will feel like he does not have to do what you say. You know it's just like a dog. You know if you find you know a, a dog. If he can sense fear, he will not run. He will not fear you. But the moment he says you are strong and that you are the one in authority and that you are the one in charge, he will bow. He will back off. He will submit. Well, you know, that's how demons are. They can sense fear and they can hear what you are saying. And they can tell where there is faith. When they see you don't give up. When they see you are standing on what you believe. By default they will lose. They will lose just by you standing and having done all to stand. They will automatically lose. But the moment you begin to speak fear and defeat and failure. This is how they'll see you. I'm telling you. Everything in the Old Covenant or the Old Testament. It's a shadow and shows us what goes on in the realm of the spirit. But in the Old Testament. Everything is shown to us in a natural way. But it's only 
a reflection of what's going on in the realm of the spirit. Your enemies truly see you the way you see yourself. And so the Old Testament showed us that that is what goes on. The same way it happens in the natural. If a person see that you don't see yourself as someone that is valuable or someone that is worthy or someone that has confidence confidence or strong, that's how they will see you. But when they see you have respect for yourself and you are strong, they will respect you too. It's the same way the enemy feels. Oh yes. You have to put your foot down. You have to begin to speak like you are in authority. Hallelujah. You have to begin to, to say who you are in Christ Jesus. And command that thing to go. This is what the Lord showed the disciples. And remember, what is written was written for us and for our learning. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 15 verse 4. The scriptures were written to teach us. And to give us hope and encouragement. And also to help us wait and endure with patience for what God promised us to be fulfilled in our life. Hallelujah. And so the Lord was even showing the disciples in Mark chapter 11. How they had power even over natural things. Things in nature that they could even speak to the fig tree that he spoke to. They could speak to the mountain as well. And they could command things to move. They could command things to die. Because there is the power of life and death in your tongue. But it comes out of your spirit. And the faith you've been given. To where you can declare and decree a thing. And it will be established. But without faith. It won't move. The enemy will not obey you. That situation will not turn around. But when there is faith, there will be power. And so the Lord had given them this, this example. He showed it to them by doing it himself first in front of them. And so they couldn't believe that the fig tree had died. If you read in that chapter of Mark, chapter 11, when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, he wanted to eat. And because it was no figs, the Lord had the power to curse the tree. He had power over things in nature. With God, all things are possible. You're a ruler over all things. And so he was showing them this, that he ruled even over the tree. He ruled over things in the earth. And so the Bible tells us in Mark chapter 11, verse 20, the next morning as they passed by the fig tree he had cursed, the disciples noticed it had withered from the roots up. And Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day and exclaimed, look, Rabbi, the fig tree you cursed has withered and died. Then Jesus said to the disciples, he told them all, have faith in God, have faith in God. He says, I tell you the truth in verse 23, you can say to this mountain. So he showed them the, the mountain. He says, May you, he says, I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. He says, but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. So in other words, he was saying you must really believe that you have authority over that mountain. And God is saying the same things to you precious standers that are standing in the gap for your family. Many of you that are standing for restoration in your marriage. You must really believe that you have power over that situation that has come in to separate what God has joined together. You must really believe that you have power over the enemy that has come in to steal your loved one. You must really believe that you have power against that darkness that has come in. And that is buffeting you. That has come in to challenge you. That has come in to steal and stop the plans that God has for your life. You must believe that you have power over it. And have no doubt in your heart. And it will obey you. It will happen. You see, this is, this is what, was, what was going on in, in Numbers. 
with the children of Israel, they first had to believe that they had power over the giant and that they was going to be able to take the land. The only two that believed that. If you go back and read in that chapter of Numbers chapter 13 and 14, the only two that really believed that out of that group was Joshua and Caleb. They said, we are well able to go in and possess the land. These giants, he said, they said they are bread for us. They are bread for us, meaning we will devour them as long as God be for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here is, is what the Lord was showing them. Just have faith in God. Just know that as long as God be for you, what can stand against you? Let your faith be in God alone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And therefore you can believe that that situation will obey you. But if you only think and see yourself as being the one doing it and not God. In you, then you will feel defeated. You will feel like that situation cannot turn around. But when you have faith in God, trusting and believe, trusting and believing that He's greater than it all because He is God Almighty, this is what pleases Him. That situation will obey you, that situation will bow. To the name of Jesus, the name you believe in. But if you don't believe your God is greater than the situation, that situation won't move. But when you go in having the mindset that my God is greater. And as long as my God be for me, what could stand against me? You have to believe in the son of God. You have to believe in the one who is on the inside of you. You have to see him as being the greater one. This is how you overcome this world. This is what will remove fear. Doubt and unbelief. Having faith in the one who is. Over the thing you are seeing. My God. And that is what will cause you to rise far above it. And see that situation as being powerless. And you are the one with the power. And then he says in verse 24. And I tell you. You can pray for anything. And if you believe. That you have received that it, it will be yours. And that goes back. To believe in that because God is with you and on your side. And that you are the righteousness of Christ. And God is for you and nothing can stand against you. Therefore you can believe you've received it. Because you are the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Remember we talked about this on last week. You are the righteousness of God. And therefore you can ask for anything according to his will. And it will be given. And if you know that it is yours, it will be yours. In James chapter 1, verse 16, that the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. That's the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man of valid much. That's the prayer of faith. That is a prayer that is being prayed by someone who fully believes in God. There is no doubt they see God as being greater than the situation. That prayer has power because it goes back to having faith in the one who is greater than the situation. Hallelujah. And so I want to pray that the Lord will begin to enlighten the eyes of your understanding and help that one that is struggling right now. Help that one that is struggling to believe that you, with God on your side and in you, I pray that God allows you to see that you are greater than that situation. That situation is coming down. I pray that God helps you to see that you have authority over it all and that you begin to take your authority. You will begin to take on his image and likeness. You will see yourself far above your enemies. You will no longer see yourself as a grasshopper or defeated where well, you have to depend on everyone else because you're not sure if God will hear you or you don't feel like you could stand against that trial or that situation. God is able to put that power and authority on the inside of you as you renew your mind and begin to see that you are in authority. I'm telling you, that's when things will begin to turn around in your life. That's when things will begin to obey you. As you see 
yourself being over that situation because Christ is on the inside of you who is greater than it all. And so I want to pray right now. Hallelujah for that one right now that you will be encouraged. That you will be encouraged in your faith and begin to see yourself as God sees you. Father, I pray right now for anyone under the sound of my voice that is struggling, Lord, help their eyes to see spiritually that they are powerful because they have you on the inside of them. Lord, help them to see themselves as you see them. That they will no longer see themselves as being powerless or helpless or defeated. I pray, Lord God, that they will see that their enemies are up under their feet. And they begin to take their authority and speak to that situation and speak to that enemy. And command them to go in Jesus' name for your glory and name's sake, Father. Lord, yes, you tell us in your word for one of us can chase a thousand. Two can put 10,000 to flight. Lord, I pray you will give them the strength and the boldness, Lord God, to tread upon their enemies, to feel like that they can do it. And with you, all things are possible. Lord God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, that sense of knowing that they have the power and that they stand, hallelujah, stronger than their enemies. Praise your holy name, Lord. We give you the praise. Thank you, Lord, that the captives are coming out. Their loved ones are coming out in Jesus' name. The mountain is moving in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak to you, mountain, and we declare and decree that you are defeated. Be cast out now in Jesus' name. Every principality, we bind you now in Jesus' name. We declare and decree you are a defeated foe. You are defeated and you are under our feet. Get out now in Jesus' name and we loose these marriages right now. We loose loved ones right now. Spouses who were away from you, God, we loose them in Jesus' name. We declare and decree they are free. That they are free to come to know the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And darkness has to go from their minds now. That they begin to see the light. That they begin to see the light in the face of our Lord Jesus Christ and sense your love, oh God. And come to repentance in Jesus' name. We loose each and every one of them. Every spouse that has been away from you. That have been bound. We declare and decree they are free in Jesus' name. Lord, yes, let the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be revealed to their hearts and minds. And households be saved. And marriages restored. We declare it and decree it now. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray this prayer in his precious holy name. And we thank you for the victory that you have given us. We can pray and ask of anything according to your will. And you hear us. And we know that you hear us. And therefore, since we know that you hear us, we know that we have the petition that we've asked for. For you wish that not one, not one would perish, but that all would come to the knowledge of truth. Thank you for giving us the grace to pray this prayer that is according to your will. Your plans and your purpose. And we praise you and thank you for your love and your kindness. In Jesus name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Trust and believe precious standards on who God has called you to be. Continue standing on his word. Meditating on it. Remember the word is the mirror and it shows you who you already are. Let that become your reality from the inside out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And begin to tell that situation to bow. Tell that situation to get out of your marriage. And begin to see that mountain. Begin to see that thing obey you. Remember Jesus said it will. But you must really believe that it will. He loves you. Hallelujah precious standards. And I love you too. God loves you. And until next time remember you are already blessed. Bye-bye.